Welcome back to the 21 Convention 2019 of Warsaw, Poland. Our next speaker is the man who wrote the book on day game. I call him day games, the master, or the master of day game of London. He's a good new friend of the convention. This will be his first time speaking. I'm very excited to have him on our stage. Without further ado, please let me welcome Nick Krauser to the 21 Convention stage. Thanks, man. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Good guess. All right, lads. So, um, I'm going to talk about day game. That's my topic. Day game, namely chasing skirt in the street, the mall, cafe, wherever, usually the street, when the sun is up usually. And uh, it's going to be quite a technical talk. Um, I'm going to work through what is known as the London day game model, which I co-created. It's named that because it was a bunch of skirt chasers in London, running around chasing skirt, and we were trying to figure out how do you pick up women during the day, and this is what we came up with. So, you might think, why me, why day game? Well, I'm so glad you asked. So, why me? Um, I've been doing day game for about 10 years, um, obsessively so for the first eight years of that. I've spoken to a lot of women. Uh, I banged a lot of hot women, some not so hot. You know, I've, uh, I've been around, I think I've got a good handle on this process and I've done a lot of coaching to explain it. I wrote a couple of books on it. The main one, Dig in Mastery, big, thick, massive tome on all the ins and outs of this, but don't worry, we're not gonna go into that level of detail. I just wanna give you an overview of how we like to chase skirt during the day this model, and if that takes you fancy, well, have at it. The materials are there, the girls are out there in the street, go chase them. So how about why would you choose to do day game? Well, day game is not the only way to get laid, of course. People have been getting laid for a very long time. Um, more than one way to skin a cat. And day game's gonna appeal to people who have certain priorities, certain personality types. And if you think it's for you, well, go for it. But I'm not kind of day game jihadi. I'm not like, this is the best way to get laid. This is the only way to get laid. This is where you get the best women. It's not like that. Um, what I like about day game, I'm deeply introverted. Very, very introverted. So to me, a nightclub is hell. Right? To me, I think of a nightclub, and I'm thinking, well, it's some sweaty basement somewhere playing some god-awful dance music full of bring jackasses who are drunk. And for my personality type, I just don't like that. What I do like is I like walking around. I like walking around in my thoughts, taking in the atmosphere in the sunshine. That pleases me, so day game's good for that. If you're that way inclined, it might work for you. Um, day game is also good for people who like to talk because if you're chatting to a girl for five, 10 minutes on the street, it's just you and her, one on one, you can get a very deep, thick, emotional bandwidth there. You can get a lot of connection. So if that appeals to you, again, dig in might be your thing. Um, and another reason why you might like it is it's a healthy way to chase skirt. You do it sober, you do it in the daytime. I like to think of it this way, there's, um, those of you who've read your history, or are considerably older than I am, will know that Victorian England, the cities, you know, London, Birmingham, so on, were smog-ridden, incredibly polluted cesspits. Very unhealthy places. So there used to be a thing where middle-class people would go to the doctor, suffering from various ailments, and the doctor would say to them, look, you're not actually sick. 
There's nothing actually wrong with you except you're living in London. Right? That's the problem. So the prescription used to be to go to a seaside resort, like Torquay, Blackpool, South End, places like this. The English coastline where the air's clear, the sky's blue, the grass is green, and you can walk around in a very chilled atmosphere, taken in the air. And that is what you're doing when you do day game. Good day gamers who've been doing it a lot are very healthy people because they're walking around, you know, a lot of hours a day, very mindful of their posture as they do so. They're getting a lot of the, whatever the vitamin is you get from the sun, drinking a lot of water, you're getting a good night's sleep. You don't have to go out clubbing on a Friday or Saturday night to find girls. You're not getting the music in your ear, giving you tinnitus. So it's quite healthy. I mean, psychologically, it can be a bit dangerous in certain ways. Maybe we'll go into that sometime. But it's very good for you physically. Um, yeah, I think that's enough preamble on why day game. I mean, you'll, if you do it, you'll, you'll get a feel for if it's for you. It's also very good for your masculinity. So cold approach pickup generally is um, thinking of what Richard was saying in his earlier talk about taking control of your life, about intent, about um, forcing yourself to go out and do things, which might be difficult. And day game is hard. It's very hard, but what it is, is it's you saying, look, you know what? I'm not going to sit on my ass right swipe and Tinder. Is it right swipe or left swipe? I don't know. I never use it. But you're not just swiping Tinder and hoping for girls to come to you. What you're saying is, right, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to put myself in the mix. I'm going to walk around, keep my eyes open for girls I like the look of. And if I like one, I'm going to go up and tell her. In a rather more complex way than just tell her. But you're going to tell her. You're going to convey your intent. You're not hiding it. You're not leaning back, too cool for school, pretending you don't fancy her. You're going right up. And in a more nuanced way, you're basically saying, look, I like you. I'm pursuing you. And that feels good feels very good when you do it. It can be very stressful, but you get into it and it become very addictive, feels very manly. And also because day game is very difficult because you're doing it very sober and you're trying to engineer interesting, seductive conversations from zero with someone you've literally just seen, it's also going to test your problem solving. It's going to test your wits. It's going to work on your charisma. You're going to get a lot of rejection, which you've then got to get back up after. So it's also, in a way, it's kind of like the furnace that strengthens the steel. So again, good day gamers tend to come across as quite strong characters psychologically. So anyway, enough preamble on why. Let's talk about expectations if you decide to do it. Well, I don't mean to disillusion you, but you're not going to be banging a load of supermodels. Sorry, that's POA marketing bullshit doesn't actually happen. And in the unlikely event that you are able to bang a load of supermodels based on tally on your personal charisma, I'll be emailing you for coaching. So what can you reasonably expect? Well, ignore the marketing bullshit, right? It's not a magic bullet. It's not one simple trick. It's not, I was this abject loser virgin and now um, drowning knee deep in top tier pussy. That's not going to happen. But what will happen is very, very beneficial for your life if you're ambitious and you put yourself to it. So what is a reasonable expectation? It's kind of like how long is a piece of string? And it's all based on your SMV, your sexual market value. Everything is adjusted to that. So if your SMV is high, you're going to do better because game is like a value add, allows you to deliver your SMV effectively in a short period of time. So one way to do it would be to think of your own sexual history and think, okay, what's the hottest bird you've banged in the last five years? Right, forget that, it was an outlier. What was the second hottest bird you banged in the last five years? That sort of girl, you can probably, if you commit to this, you'll probably either get a lot more girls of that caliber or you'll get a reasonable number of girls of, say, a point or two hotter than that. That's a reasonable expectation although not in the beginning, because it's a formidable learning curve. What might be another way of looking at it? Um, well, the difficulty depends on your ambition. I was rather obsessive. I must have spoken to between seven and 10,000 girls over the last 10 years. It is possible to you know, just dabble, spend, could talk to a couple of hundred girls, get you an idea of what you want, and then you know, you're just looking for a girlfriend, say, or You've got your projects that you're doing and you just every now and then you go out for a couple of hours, talk to girls, okay, 
you know, again, you're not going to be bang supermodels, but it can markedly improve your life. So that is what it can give you. But um, let's see. Because there's no magic, it's SMV. This talk's going to be technical, and I don't want to give you the wrong impression. I'm not saying, learn this, everything's great, right? There's been a lot of other talks you've had, a lot of things you've read, which are things like improve your SMV, right? Go to the gym, eat right, change your aesthetic, read a lot of books, straighten out the inner game kinks in your own psychology based on whatever's gone on in your past, right? I absolutely recommend you do all of those things because they're going to raise your SMV, make you a more charming, charismatic person. And then when you hit the streets and you start doing this stuff, we're going to find a way of delivering that value. Right? You're not bamboozling the girl. You're not tricking the girl. She knows exactly what you're up to. Why we've got this model is it's a very structured way of starting from zero and getting five, ten minutes in, and you've been able to deliver a lot of the value that you have, show the girl a lot about you in multiple facets. You've learned something about that girl, create a nice little energy, and then at the end you find out if it's going to go somewhere. Right, so I often like to think of it as a value delivery mechanism. It's quite an efficient way to do so. So... And another way to think of it is like poker, playing a game of poker. You know, TV poker, No Limit Texas Hold'em, is the skill is in playing your cards correctly, but you never really get to choose the cards you get. So I think of it when you're walking around meeting girls on the street, think of that as being dealt your two whole cards in a Texas Hold'em game, right? You go up to the girl, you don't know much about her. She could be really into your type of guy. She could be available or she could be not into you. She could be unavailable. You don't know that necessarily until you go up and talk to her. I mean, there's hints, we can go into it. But you're going to get cards. You're going to talk to a girl. And then, depending on how that interaction goes, you're going to think, you know what? I'm going to put more into this. I'm going to see how it goes. That's a little bit like waiting for the flop. You find out more. And then you play that hand and you might think, you know what, this isn't working, this isn't the right type of girl, or she's not into me, or something, I'm going to fold. And in day game, you're going to fold most of your hands, just like you do in bar game and night game. Most girls you talk to one no, for various reasons. Don't like you, not available, whatever it is. So you fold those hands. But that doesn't matter, because what good poker players do is they manage their chip stack, which in this case is your emotional energy. And you're waiting for the right hand that you play well, so you win everything. So the payoff structure of day game, if you're a player, you don't have to be a player, but if you're a player, you're not just looking for a girlfriend, is loss, 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 massive win, loss, 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 massive win. That's the payoff, right? You're not going to get every girl, not even anywhere close. Right? So. so that's a little bit of a preamble on what to expect. So let's go into the model itself. So. The purpose of the model is to give you a structured interaction where you can practice each element, get better at it, learn to see what the girl's giving back to you, learn to more effectively convey who you are in an attractive manner. And there's a direction. Right? An analogy I like to use, especially when I'm watching some of the really god-awful infields on YouTube, is imagine like one guy going up to a girl and talking is not game. It's not pickup. It can be a nice chat. It might even go somewhere, but, there's a, but it doesn't mean any game is taking place. Game is a process. Just like putting on a pair of swimming trunks, jumping in the deep end of the pool and flailing your arms around is not swimming. It's drowning, right? It might look a little bit like swimming, but it's not going anywhere. Swimming is a skill set. And you can learn it. Game is an art. It's a bit like, say, in boxing, right? Like, coaches don't say to their boxer, just go and fucking hit him until he falls over, right? It's not purely about mindset. There's a technical skill. There's jabs, crosses, bobs, weaves. There's a technical skill, and so it is with game. So. All right, then. So let's talk about the model. It's very simple. There's only five stages to remember. Open, stack, vibe, investment, close. We'll get into what spikes are in a minute. All right. Open is beginning an encounter, beginning a conversation. It takes anywhere between half a second to 10 seconds, very fast. I'm gonna go all these in more detail in a minute, I'm just giving the overview. Stack, that's the next thing. It is a bridge to a conversation. It's the bit where you create the conversation out of nothing. So you've stopped the girl, you have her attention, she's got an inkling of why you're talking to her. 
you now have to build a conversation, find a topic, we call that stacking. Otherwise, you just open, maybe give her a compliment, she's okay, thank you, and walks off. You have to indicate we're going into a conversation, you have to carry a lot of the work here to make the conversation happen. Okay, next, vibe, vibing. What this is, is what normal people would call flirting. It's a light-hearted, playful exchange of energy for the teasing and challenging, having fun where nothing's taken at face value, and you're just easing into talking to each other. Typically, goes on between one minute and three minutes. Then you move into an investment stage. Investment is actually getting to know each other. Telling her about you, finding out about her. And this time, it is at face value. You actually say what you mean. So that's the investment stage. And then finally, you'll come to the point, five, 10 minutes in, maybe even 20 minutes in, where you think, right, I've ticked all the check boxes. I've conveyed who I am, what I want. She's given me a lot back. I think this is working. And then you go for the close, which usually is just you take a number, but depending on the situation, you might say, you know what, Look, why, why are we talking here on the street? There's a cafe over there. Let's go have a coffee right now, right? Instant date. So this talks to me about just that process, not the texting, not the dating, not the escalation afterwards. So now, before the open, you get what you might call pre-approach. Tree approach is everything you do from deciding to go out to hit on the girl to actually find a girl and opening. So I want to say a few words about that. So if you ever walk down the street and look around at the people, you'll notice that most people are not conscious of how they're presenting themselves to the public, right? They're too busy. They've just got off the metro. They've got to pop into a shop, buy, you know, pot of pasta and get home. They think they're what they're going to watch on Netflix, whatever. They are not conscious of how they're presenting themselves to the world around. And they don't need to be. You know, they might be happily married with kids. Everything's going great. They don't need to be conscious of it. But if you are walking around chasing skirt, you have to be conscious of it. Because just as you're walking around, you know, you see a hot bit of flange go past and you're like, ooh, fucking hell, right? You want girls to be noticing you positively before you've even spoken to them. So how do you do that? First thing you have to do is you have to adjust your metronome. So you know metronome, right, beats per minute. What you'll find is most people, their metronome, which um, times their body gestures, their vocal tone and everything, moves quite fast. And the more stressed you are, the faster it's going to go. I'm probably talking faster right now than I normally do because this is my first time on stage for the 21 convention, right? It's a little bit of a pressure situation. And day games are a very high pressure situation. But if you think of like cool people, you know, if you think of Clint Eastwood, man with no name, right, you think of, the, of Tyler Durden from Fight Club, you think of the coolest guys in Hollywood, the characters, they move slowly, they talk slowly, they're laconic. If you think of like the coolest animals, like lions, tigers, they're slow, they're laconic. Right, little chihuahuas are yappy. Little yappy and they move fast, right? Lions don't until they kill. So generally speaking, slower, more laconic is cool. So what you often want to do when you're day gaming is you want to slow your metronome down so that all of your behaviors slow down. So the first way you do that is you just walk slowly. First thing you do, you walk slower than everybody else. Very simple. Then if you're with a wing, you'll try and talk a bit slower. You'll try to slow your gestures down. And what you're doing is you're just adding a little increment onto how attractive you are. Like I say, no magic bullets. All this model is you're just adding little increments onto how charismatic, how attractive you are, so that when you do roll the dice with a girl you like, it's more likely to come up with the number you want. Right? Again, it's like why we use poke analogy probability. So you got your metronome, you move nice and slow, talking slow, and that's calming you. And that means your default level when you go talk to a girl is going to be a bit slower, a bit cooler. Right. Next thing you want to do, pre-approach, is you want to become very mindful of your posture and your body. So I normally take my students through a mindfulness exercise where I will talk them up from focusing on their toes and the crunch of your toes. I mean, you might, maybe you can do it right now. You think of your toes crunching a bit, feel them against the sock. Feel the connection of your feet to the carpet. And then I just talk them up through all the joints of the body. Get the hips a bit forward, chest a bit out, shoulders a bit back, chin up a little bit. 
a little bit of swag into the shoulders, maybe a mental image that you're about to go on stage and collect the award for Coolest Motherfucker 2019. And what you're going to be doing is suddenly, you're mindful of your posture, you've got good correct posture, you're moving quite slowly, you just present a more attractive image to all these girls who are walking past you. All right. Next thing you want to do is you want to get your mind in the right place. So the biggest problem with cold approach day game, indeed cold approach bar game, night game, is approach anxiety. It is that block you feel when you move from, oh, I'd like to talk to that woman to, you know what, I think I'll talk to that woman. And then the invisible wall drops down and you just can't move and you can't do it. We call that approach anxiety. Now, approach anxiety, I think of it, is where you're all here in the front of your mind, right? The anxiety is here, neuroticism here, you're spinning ideas, you've got a load of self-talk, negative self-talk, and it's spinning around and it distances you from the feeling of your body, from your feeling of connection with the straight, and it makes you anxious and speeds you up. So, conventional ways of dealing with that is to fight fire with fire. You fight negative self-talk with positive self-talk. Now, I think that doesn't work, certainly not in day game, because what that's like is it's like trying to smooth water, like turbulent water with your hand. It just doesn't do it. Or think of it if you're scuba diving, you have beautiful clear water and you accidentally kick up the sand and the sand's everywhere, fucking with the visibility. You can't press it back down, right? I don't think you can fight negative self-talk on the street with positive self-talk. What you have to do is you have to distract yourself. You have to use distraction gambit. So what I like to do is this. You're walking around, say, with your wing, or you can be by yourself, and you want to put your mind out onto the street and do a hypervigilance exercise. So a hypervigilance exercise is you start picking out everything you can see in the street. Now, I originally got this idea from reading a book about a MI5 counter-terrorist spy who said part of his training is when they're walking down the street, he says, oh, yeah, third floor window open, dark, could be a sniper. All right, two guys stand next to a white van talking. They don't seem to be working. And he's spotting threats. And that's where I got the idea from. So you want to do a positive version of that, relentlessly positive version of that to improve your vibe. So you walk around, you see, you know, a dog with his tongue hanging out. And you're like, oh, there's a cute dog. Look at him with his little tongue hanging out. Right? You see, like, a little family playing in the park, and it's cute. You notice them and called out your wing. And you're like, oh, yeah, that's like, uh, oh, you see the squirrel going up the tree. That's cool. Oh, God, you know, the sky's really blue, feels very warm, I like this. Oh, those ice creams, those are my favorite ice creams, right? You're talking relentlessly positive, and about the girls as well. Oh, fucking hell, look at her, oh, she's nice, I love to bang her, right? So what you're doing is you're putting your mind out here, and all that mental bandwidth, which would normally be fucking you up, negative self-talk, is now put onto the outside. So that calms you. And what it also means is you're hyper aware of the street, and you become considerably more comfortable and confident of your position on the street, spotting everything. So it's very win-win. So by now in pre-approach, you're walking around, glorious sunshine, with your friend, having a chat, you're mindful of your posture, you feel connected to the street, your mind is out there with relentless positivity in a good mood. Right, it's great. Now what you want to start doing is spotting girls. So generally speaking, I'd say you focus your mind about 20 meters out, focus your vision about 20 meters out. So what you want to do is you want to be taking in all the information of all the girls, noticing the ones you like the look of, and giving yourself time to react. So let's say, you know, a girl's walking on the other side of the street, there's a load of people between you, you see her over there, so you've got time to slightly change your course to make it a bit easier to get in there. Um, so you'll often fall into a kind of a trance, like a day game trance, this happy, comfortable vibe. And the type of metaphor I like to use for it is I call it the day game river. So I'll just tell you a little parable. Imagine you're walking through, you're hiking with your best friend. You're walking through the forest, beautiful hot day, birds chirping, sun's bright, and you come to a little clearing and there's a stream. You can see the tinkling of a stream, nice big wide stream, it's about knee deep. And you think, you know what, I'm a bit hot, that stream looks great, you just step into the middle of the stream. And you just stand there and you're letting all the water just flow past and it just feels great and you're enjoying yourself. And a little lily comes down, comes down. Oh, it's very pretty. You, you reach for it, you try and grab it. Okay, maybe you can't quite reach it. 
doesn't matter, you're enjoying yourself, right? You feel good. But later, another lo lovely lily comes down. Oh, I quite like that. Maybe you, you get to grab it, you have a little look at it, and you put it back. That's the kind of metaphor for when you're walking around the street and all these girls are going past you, right? Some, a girl attracts your eye, you feel instinctive, you know what, I like her. Maybe you're a player, you just want to get laid, maybe you're looking for a girlfriend, whatever, it's the same process. You see the lily coming, you're like, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to reach out and try and get it. Maybe you get it, maybe you don't, and then you move on. So that's like pre-approach mindset. So, now, target selection. How do you actually decide which women to talk to? Right, so, the raw fact is most women are no. Right? They've got a boyfriend, they're married, don't like you, in a bad mood, whatever. Most women are no, right? But some are yes, some are maybe. And you want to try and reduce the work rate. You want to, you know, reduce the amount of squeeze you have to do to get the juice. So one way of doing that is choosing your targets. I know, that's predatory language. Choosing your targets carefully. So, I mean, if you've got the energy and the motivation to just go talk to every girl, you're like, look, knock yourself out, knock yourself out, right? N nothing wrong with that. But, you know, if you're doing a lot of day game over a lot period of time, you're going to think, you know what, I'm going to try and make this a bit more efficient. So you've got to start looking at the girls around. Obviously, I'd say only open the girls you like, obviously, right? Don't get into these weird um, learning exercises. Oh, I must talk to 20 girls today. I must talk to 10 girls today. Because there might not be 10 girls that you like there. And if you're talking to girls you don't like, well, you're incongruent. You're training bad habits of incongruency. And the girl's going to think this is a bit weird. I don't even think he even likes me. Why is he talking to me? And you're just creating a lose-lose interaction, which doesn't help anybody. Right, so you approach the girls you genuinely like. So how do you know if they are more likely to be up for it? Right, well, there's a couple of things you can look for. Now, bear in mind, this is art, not science. But there's some things you can look for. So number one, body language. Girls have an ovulation cycle. I believe it stays 15 to 17 after menses begin. And when girls are horny, they normally show it. Show a bit, lot more skin, a bit more revealing. You look at them and you think, in her mind, she's feeling more sexy than merely beautiful. So if you're getting that feeling from a girl, oh yeah, it looks like she might be quite up for it, generally. Right? She might not even know you exist yet, but you see her and, you know, she's shown a lot of skin in this sexy sort of way. You think, you know what, okay, that's a bit higher probability. A bit higher probability. Whereas if she's completely um, covered top to bottom, like, you know, she's uh, on her way to Saudi Arabia, you might think, you know what, maybe that's a lower probability. Then look at her body language. Key things to look for. Hip sway. Girls who are feeling a bit horny and would, you know, like the world to manifest some adventure for them, they tend to sway their hips side to side when they walk. You can notice that. Another one, head bobble. Normally comes at the same time as hip sway. So you think of those little bobble heads that you can put on your car dashboard on the springs. Their heads are like this. Well, girls walk like that when they're horny. Right? They've got the hip sway and their heads are like... I mean, I exaggerate it, but you notice a bit of head bobble. Another one, watch where their eyes go. A girl who is hoping the universe manifests adventure will have very curious eyes. They're going all over. They're looking at the shop window. They're looking at people going past. They're looking at the dog playing with a tennis ball. They're checking guys out. I mean, there's, there's levels of extremity of it, but girls looking for trouble, their eyes will wander. So keep an eye on for that. Um, other things you can watch for is a girl who's ambling slowly and dreamily. Girls seem to know instinctively that when they're hoping to meet a man, they have to look a bit vulnerable. They have to look a bit like you know, the slowest gazelle in the herd, pack, whatever the group noun is. Right, so they tend to come off from the group, they'll walk around by themselves, they'll walk a bit slow, they'll look approachable. So again, it just ups the probability a bit. You know what, that girl probably wouldn't mind meeting a guy. But then you think, well, that might be that she's open to the world generally, but does she have any interest in me personally? Well, you can test that through what um, we call indicators of interest. Pre-approach, indicators of interest, IY. So you're walking past a girl, watch her eyes. You might you know, have a bit of your swag on. You might look at her, and you're watching where her eyes go. Do they check you out? Now there's a bunch of, the, bunch of IYs you can look for. The most common one is she's walking past you, and just as she's about to pass you, she gives you a little look up. Like we call that a sly OI because they're hoping to get away with it. 
But you know, a girl might eyeball you, she might turn her head, she might look at you once, look away, look back at you. These are all IUIs where you think, you know what, she isn't just generally hoping to meet a guy, she seems to have some sort of interest in me. Again, your probability goes up. Open girls like that, you're gonna get statistically better responses. So that's a bit of the pre-approach game. Now let's talk about once you've decided to talk, the open. Okay, the open. So the internet is full of great openers. Openers don't really matter, they really don't. And yet they're also the most important part of the game. It's a bit of a paradox I'll try and explain. So what you say doesn't matter much, but how you say it matters a lot. Right. So the three key rules of opening, engage and girl, is eye contact, stop signal, and conviction. Those are the three things. If you get those right, everything else is negotiable depending on the situation. So what do I mean, eye contact? Well, you look at the girl as you walk up to her, as you attract her attention, and you continue looking at the girl as you deliver your initial, you know, hey, I want to talk to you, we'll go into the words later. You hold the eye contact the whole time. And there's qualities of eye contact that as you get better, you get better at doing this. Okay, stop signal. Well, she's going somewhere. You want to indicate to her that you intend to stop to talk. So a stop signal, let's say she's coming at you. Oh, excuse me, stop, 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 stop. Right? Now, it's not, you know, this many of the hands in one finger, right? It doesn't matter. The point is you're saying stop. Let's say she's walking this way and you've got to get in front of her. You might tap her shoulder. Excuse me, stop, 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 stop. Like this, right? Doesn't matter. There's various different geometry to the open if you're really ambitious and you really want to nail this. But the key thing is you're giving us some sort of indication that you intend her to stop and listen to you. And if you do that with sufficient masculine presence and dominance, with strong but gentle eye contact, a very good chance she's going to stop. And then conviction. Well, mean it. You've got to really mean it. Now, that girl might walk past you and ignore you and blow you off and like, ah, oh, fuck off, little man, right? That sometimes happens. Not a lot, but it does happen. But she's going to damn well know you tried. Right? You saw her, you wanted her, you want to in introduce yourself. So, you know, the train's coming down the tracks. You straddle the tracks, right? You're not, she goes past you like, excuse me, like one of those charity sign-up people. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Could I just perhaps sneak into your pussy? Sorry, right? No, you go in, strong conviction. And then what she does with it, that's her business. So that is the basic geometry of the open. But what might you say? What the words, what words might you like to say? Well, it doesn't really matter. If um, I'd say what normally happens is when you start moving in on a girl, she'll have an instinctive reaction. Right? And I'm talking microseconds from her realizing you're going to talk about There'll be an instinctive reaction. Often you haven't even got your first word out. And the instinctive reaction can pretty much go one or two ways. It can be lighting up, which is like, oh, right? That's great. That's exactly what you're hoping for. Or it can be something like, what? Yeah. Can I help you? Yeah. Like that. Right. So if you're getting the kind of confused or can I help you look, you've got to put a little bit of a background into what you'd be like, look, excuse me, sorry. I was just over there and I saw you and I wanted to say. Right. You've got a little bit of context for the interaction and then you go on your opener. If she gives you, if she lights up immediately, well, you know, what normally happens is your blood fills with like the power of a thousand warriors, your confidence goes up and you get very direct. And you're like, right, you stop, I want to talk to you. And you know, smirk comes on your face naturally. And then normally in the open, what you'll say is you'll basically just want to tell her some version of, I know it's doing, I like you. Now to get good at that takes a hell of a lot of practice, right? A hell of a lot of practice, but really it also comes down to just saying, look, I just noticed you, I like you, I want to talk to you, some version of that. Um, maybe in the questions after this, if you're really interested in my favorite openers, I can tell you them. So you've opened. All right. Normally what I like to do is I like to put a label on the girl mentally when I see her. She's walking down, I notice something about her, like, you know, maybe she's got like big luscious black hair and eyelashes, something, ah, right, she's got hair like a shampoo commercial. Maybe she's really tall and leggy with a serious face. Okay, she looks like a catwalk model who's lost her runway. Maybe it's winter, she's got like a hood up with all the fur around. Okay, she's an Eskimo, whatever. I normally will look at a girl and put some sort of creative label on her, which is what I'm going to then refer back to her in the open. Look, uh, I just noticed you're walking past and you're very colorful. You've got this lovely flowery skirt on. I like that. You look kind of like a Japanese print on a wall. It doesn't really matter. It's nonsense. You're just saying something positive about her. 
and she's going to feel the energy. And she should stop most of the time. Right, so the stack. Assuming she's stopped, what do you do next? You've got to build a conversation. You've got to stack. So the key to stacking is all the weight is on you. All the conversational weight is on you. She was just on her way home. She's thinking about what she's going to watch on TV or whatever, what shoes she's going to buy. Right? She's not prepared for conversation. She doesn't know anything about you. Um, but girls are receptive to male advances. They know it's their job to politely receive an advance and decide what to do about it. So she's going to listen, usually. It's going to give you a chance to make a conversation. So talk about her. That's the key thing. She doesn't know who you are. Doesn't give a shit. Not right now, anyway. Just met you. But she does give a shit about herself, and almost everybody cares about what other people think of them. So if you come up to her with a very positive energy, with a cheeky vibe, quite dominant, clearly hitting on her, and then you indicate to her you're about to tell her something about herself that you noticed, she's going to be considerably more likely to hang around and hear it. Right? It's going to be interesting. It. So easy ways to do that, you just say what you see. Say what you see. I often say to students, just pick, pick three things, two positive, one of the T's. Just say, look, uh, I really like how you look. You look very Spanish because you've got like, your big hair, your big eyes, and your silly shoes. Right? Very simple, very simple. That could be one. Could be her manner. Right? You can say, look, I just want to say like, you had such a dreamy look on your face. Your like, eyes were looking up like you were thinking of unicorns and rainbows. It was quite cute. I like that. But you seem a bit crazy. Right? The words aren't the important thing. You're making an observation, it's playful, it's something about her, and you start stacking. Then what you'll normally do is make some kind of assumption or some kind of um, observation about her, which is giving her something to chew on. So you might say, you know, you look, you look very Italian. What's going to happen? She's going to comment on that. Yes, actually, I am. Or, no, I'm not. doesn't matter. The point is not to be correct. The point is to get her talking. So you may say, oh, you look, you look very Italian. Because um, So when you were talking to your friend over there, you were like moving your hands around like this. That's a very Italian thing to do, isn't it? Oh, well, actually, yes, I'm from Rome. All oh, right, well, when I think, of, I've never been to Rome, but when I think of Rome, you know, I think of like the Roman legions. I think of the Colosseum. It's very historical. Oh, yes, love. Now you're talking about Rome. You're talking about Italy. You've got a topic, right? But she might have said, you might have said something about food. Oh, you know, oh, I love Italian food. It's absolutely gorgeous. Pizza, best thing in the world. Oh, no, in Italy, pizza's not such a big deal. So it doesn't matter. You're talking about Italian food now. Right? The point is, you're trying to find a topic in the stack. That's the key thing. You're trying to find a topic. And once you've got the topic, you stay with it. Move on with the topic. Don't keep switching it, or you're going to get stalled out. Right. Do I have anything more to say about stacking? By the way, am I dropping this too fast on you? I know there's a lot of technical stuff it might be hard to keep up but this is my bread and butter so right then so when you're stacking you're looking for hook point hook point hook point means the girl's made a decision you know what i'm going to hear this guy out make your pitch i'm going to hear you out i like this Right. Um, some girls, you start stacking, they realize you're trying to draw them into a conversation, not just compliment them. And they say, look, you know, I've got to get my bus. I'm in a hurry. Sorry, I've got a boyfriend. Look, I'm married. Right. And they're going to be no, and they're going to go away. You don't get the hook point. But a lot of girls are going to give you the hook point, and you just, you just feel it. You feel that they've made this decision. You know what? I'm going to talk to this guy. It'll often manifest itself physically. Like One thing girls will often do is they'll just cross their legs and sit on them like that to hear you. Another one might be they might get out a cigarette, light it up, and wait for you to talk. Or let's say they had the headphones in and they'd taken them off to talk to you. They might pull their phone out and stop the music, put it back in, right? They're gesturing to you that they're going to hear you out. So that's hook point. So that's a good sign usually that you can move into vibing, vibing this interplay of energy. So, vibing is flirting. The key thing about vibing is you're not communicating at face value. You're making things silly, right? So let's say you're talking to an Italian girl and she's talking about Italy. You know, 
you're talking lighthearted about it, you know, oh yeah, I'll, you know, what I really like about Italy is the Renaissance. I love the paintings. I love Michelangelo, Leonardo, Donatello. I love all the Ninja Turtles, right? It's playful, right? Um, you know, like, let's say she's Russian. I mean, because I travel a lot internationally, so it tends to be the country. But, you know, it can be her mood. It can be her, the way she looks. It can be her job. Right? There's a lot of things you talk to a girl about. I just tend to talk about the country. But let's say she's Russian. Okay, you can immediately spin a story about how your mum warned you about Russian girls because she's seen James Bond movies. And there's always a beautiful Russian girl who meets James Bond at the casino and seduces him. And then when he's sleeping, she gets her gun out and tries to kill him. So you say to her, look, I'm very nervous right now talking. I mean, you're pretty, but look, I'm nervous. Look, 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 that's how nervous I am. Right? It's playful. It's a bit silly. And you're trying to create a bit of laughing, banter, fun energy between you. And it's too early to really go much into, you know, who you really are, who she really is. Now, the, the purpose of vibing is it's attraction, attraction phase, right? There's three things you need to do with a woman to bang her. You have to make her attracted to you, attraction. You have to make her comfortable with you, comfort. And then you have to escalate her towards sex, which is seduction. Now, generally speaking, attraction comes before comfort, which comes before seduction. They don't have to, but they usually do. So vibing is, we put this in the model because we're trying to get the attraction bit early so that she sticks around to hear the comfort. Because most guys can do comfort. That's like normal nice guy talk. Most of you don't need to learn about that. So the key ways of doing attraction in day game is teasing and challenging. So teasing is you make fun of her, you know how to tease women. Challenging is you show her that you don't quite buy what she's selling. So an example of challenging is a girl might say, oh yeah, I'm actually, I'm studying economics at university. Okay. Economics? That sounds a bit boring, doesn't it? I mean, playfully, but you're challenging. And she'll be, oh, well, yeah, it is. Oh, no, it's not. Doesn't matter. You bring her in. Or she might say, well, yeah, actually, I'm going off to XYZ place next week to do ABC. Why? It's challenging. The reason it's uh, attractive is that it shows you're not a pushover. Because what a normal chump will do when a girl says something is he'll just go, yeah, awesome, awesome, brilliant, awesome. She'll be like, yeah, I just, uh, you know, mailed a letter. Oh, awesome. Yeah, and then I, I'm going to catch a bus later. Oh, awesome. Right? We've got a very low threshold for what is awesome. So to avoid that, you want to demonstrate the side of your character, which is that you're a strong masculine man with his own sense of values. You're not just a pushover. So you just drop a couple of little light challenges. Nothing serious. You know, you're not saying, oh, God, that's really fucking stupid. Well, in certain sets, you can do that when they're very bantery. But, you know, you just say, no, really? Oh, no, I actually think this thing. So that's challenging. Teasing, just be funny, you know, like maybe she smiles, you're like, oh, look, like you're, you're really cute when you smile, you've got hamster cheeks, look, you're like a little hamster, all right? It's teasing, challenging, you'll all have your own favorite ways of doing that. So we should now be getting into this stage. It's about two minutes in, three minutes in, you start dialing down the energy of this vibing energy, and then you just start getting a little bit more getting to know her. So, and the reason you do this is you don't want to come off as a clown. If all you do is fizzy, fun, fucking around, then the girl's going to walk away from you later and she's going to think, oh, well, you know, that guy was, like, funny. But she knows nothing about you. You know nothing about her. There's no reason for her to want to see you again. So you have to bed the interaction down a little bit and, you know, actually get to know each other a bit. So, I mean, most girls, when they talk to each other, their friends, about guys they're dating or thinking of dating, they normally put a label on the guy. Say, oh, like uh, Mary, so how's that surfer guy? How's it going with him? Oh, how's it going with business guy? How's it going with such and such guy? They put a label on the guy. So you want her to know a label, positive label, that she's going to put on about you. So tell her a little bit about yourself. Not a lot, but you know, put in, ask her some real questions. And if you get onto a nice topic where she tells you one of her interests, well, okay, pursue the topic. Don't be too silly about it. I, I don't really think... I need to tell you much about investment because I think all men kind of get to do it naturally. It's the vibing which can be counterintuitive because it feels like you're taking a risk. So, 
So the investment is where you get to convey your solid masculine energy, who you are. But the problem with investment is uh, can be a little bit boring. It can be a little bit boring. You can feel the hook point start to drop. Right? The fish can start to wriggle off the hook a little bit because the energy goes down a bit. It's a little bit boring, and if you're not careful, you can kind of get into a long friend zone chat, which doesn't move you towards seduction. So to counteract this, we have what we call spiking, spikes. I put them here as little flashes of hot energy. A spike is like a little hit and run gesture or statement you make to the girl, which reminds her that you're a guy trying to fuck her. So a non-verbal spike would be, let's say, talking to the girl, just talking about, I don't know, why she decided to do a philosophy degree. You know, uh-huh, mm. ooh, nice. Anyway, carry on. Right, just blatantly check our legs out and then move on. Another one, one I'll, I sometimes do if it's a really good set, let's say she's got a jacket on and look at top, I'll grab our lapels, I'll say, so that, that's very distracting, carry on. So these are ways of just reminding her you're sexual. Now the key on sexual spikes is do them and move on. Don't linger on them or it becomes creepy. But what it does is it'll spike the energy up and you'll normally notice the girls react by, they laugh, they giggle, they move off balance, they give you a flirty look, and you're like, yeah, it's still man-woman, it's still man-woman here, we're not heading to the friend zone. And if you can't think of anything creative, you can just spike by saying something like, hmm, I really like your legs, very nice. Or, you know, just compliment on being a woman. So, that is spiking. When it comes to closing, there's no particular time limit to close, right? I mean, typically in a set, it'll be five to 10 minutes, but you close when you feel like you've ticked all the boxes. Now, if she's waiting for a tram and it's going really well, you might tick those boxes off fast because you know, you've got time pressure. If you just see her sitting around in the mall and she's already told you she's got nothing to do, you can take your time, right? So there's no time limit on it. What you're doing is you're thinking, right, have I done my little vibing? Do I think she fancies me? Have we got to know each other? If we spiked a bit, okay, I think everything's there, I can close. And there's no magic to closing, there's no gambits, doesn't matter, she's got to know you for five, ten minutes. She's got a good idea if she wants to give you the number and maybe see you again. So I think it's best just to restate your intent. Right at the beginning you said some variation of, look, I think you're nice, I want to talk to you. You say that at the end. So what I'll normally say to a girl is I'll say, look, I've got to go now, but you know, I think you're a very pretty girl. How about you and me have a coffee sometime? Would you like that? And then, you know, you'll get the yes, the no, the maybe. And, you know, if it's yes, okay, you take the number. If it's maybe, like, right, I'll take that as a yes, you take the number. If it's no, well, you've got to ask yourself why. I always ask myself the question, does she fancy me? If she doesn't, you know, I've seen no sign of attraction. Just let her go. It's win-win, right? You don't want to create awkward situations that you don't need to because that's going to hurt your vibe in future sets. You know, there's no reason to put the negative energy out there. But if you think, oh, she does fancy me, I can see it, you might want to be a little bit more persistent. You might want to argue the toss a little bit. And, you know, she might change her mind. She might have just been a bit coy. She might have had an obstacle you can deal with. But, or she might just say, look, really, no, I don't want to. And then you're like, okay, fair enough. Nice meeting you. Have a great day. So that is a very simple overview. Well, I think it's simple for a London Day Game model. So I just want to, I've got a bit more time before we do questions, so I just want to talk a little bit about sexual tension. So the two biggest problems in my experience of men trying to pick up hot women, number one, approach anxiety, number two, attraction. So approach anxiety, you know, you don't pick up hot women because you're too nervous to talk to them. And if you overcome it and do talk to them, you're so nervous when you're talking to them that you make such a hash of it that you present yourself badly. Um, but attraction, the problem is most men are simply not attractive to most women, just the way it is. So how can you make yourself more attractive? Well, most of that is before you even begin this, right? It's before you hit the street. That's where most of the attraction work is done. But the things you can do in the street to be more sexual, more masculine, create a male-female polarity in the set so you don't have like a drab, slow, anemic conversation. You give the girl more of a thrill, she gets to feel the energy of feeling like a woman. So 
Three main ways of doing this is distance, eye mesmer, and touch. So distance, really, really simple. Let's say the girl is here. Most guys will talk at a polite range, because right? it feels comfortable, feels polite. But it's not sexual. So all you do is you take a step in and talk, and now you're this close. And what that does is it kicks off the animal energy. Now, not every girl will accept it. Some girls will step back a bit to reclaim the space. But girls who don't, suddenly, you've just hit the night rose, right? You've amped up the interaction. And a girl who lets you get close doesn't seem uncomfortable with it. She's still smiling. Her eyes are still sparkling. You're thinking, right, this is good. This is going good, right? And you can press your advantage. Eye mesmer. Eye mesmer is basically just seductive eye contact. It's, the term comes from the Victorian mesmerists, the hypnotists who stare at you and move their hands and you're like a snake in, in front of the mongoose, you know, like this. But this has an effect on girls. If you do powerful eye contact on a girl who likes you, it will massively amp up the situation. And what you'll usually find is when you, I normally just look into one of her eyes quite intently. And what'll happen is the, her eye will be like, beautifully colored and crisp. Like you've just like perfectly tuned in your television or the focus on a camera to get it really, really crisp. And then everything around it will just seem kind of blurred. It's a, it's a kind of weird trick of attention. But when, when you stare into someone's eyes, it's very clear. Everything else is blurred. You can't hear anything around you except your voices and you feel a very intimate moment. Now you can recreate that in the street, especially if you're close to her and she likes you. You can recreate, and it's very powerful. You can almost feel her heart beating fast when you do that. And it can make digging very addictive because it's an incredible feeling. You feel absolutely like a boss. So let's say you're close, you've done a bit of eye mesmer. The other thing you can do is touching, incidental touching. So maybe introduce yourself, you shake a hand, and you just hold a hand there, resting on yours, close like this as you talk, and just resting. Or maybe you just swing it around a bit. Maybe you just play around with it like this. Right, incidental touching. Or maybe when you're teasing her, instead of just teasing her, what you do is you put a bit of touch in. So she says something and you're like, instead of just saying, no, that's silly, you might say, no, that's silly. And just part her nose. Or you might say something, you just prod her belly, right? Now, I'm not saying you go around manhandling every woman you see in the street, right? Like you earn your way in through the earlier parts of the set through reading her comfort with the situation, right? So if a girl's trying to keep her space and she's not giving you much attraction, you don't do this shit, right? But some girls, you open them, they light up, you're really close, their eyes are going dreamy, they laugh at everything you say, those are the girls you do this stuff on. Or you might say, you might want to change the topic of conversation, like a segue in the conversation, so you might just tap on her shoulders, right, anyway, so. You're just doing all this little incidental touch very masculine, very dominant. So, distance, eye mesmer, touch. Those are three ways to amp up the sexuality of a set. Right, a little word on intent. So, one of the things that's very uh, satisfying about cold approach pickup is you feel like a boss when you're doing it. Not every day, I mean, you get bad days, a lot of rejection, but when it's going well, you feel like an absolute boss. Why? Because you are conveying masculine intent. You feel like a man, because you're going out to the girls and you're like saying, right, I like that, I'm gonna try and have some of that. And you go out, take what you want from the world. Very masculine. Now, there's long been a debate in pickup about how much should you convey that intent to a girl, right? Is it sexist to tell a girl you're trying to fuck her? What about the Me Too movement? Is it harassment? Right, um, so the key thing you gotta know is every girl knows exactly what you're up to, right? When you're doing indirect game, right, where you don't immediately convey your intent, she still knows you're trying to fuck her, right? If you're asking her where the pet shop is, she knows you're trying to fuck her, right? Any guy who goes up and talks to a pretty girl that he doesn't know, yeah, he's trying to fuck her, she knows this, right? So. It's not really about do you show your intent, do you not show your intent. Your intent's there, everyone knows it, right? People watching you know it. It's just the artful grace with which you play the game of I know that, you know that, you know that, I know that, you know that, I know. It's the gray area of seduction where she knows you're trying to pick her up. You know that she knows, you know that she knows that you know, but you're not necessarily making it overt and crude and vulgar. So I like to call it plausibly 
deniable, direct day game. So you tend not to get vulgar with your words. I mean, certain sets you can. You don't get too vulgar, too obvious with your words. But you make sure your body language is conveying exactly what you're doing through your eye contact, your touch, through innuendo, through vocal tone, through pregnant pauses, through teasing, through challenging. She knows what you're doing. She absolutely knows what you're doing. Don't at any point think that you are putting, a, putting one over on her. Right? You are not manipulating her. You are not cheating her out of something she wouldn't do if she thought if she knew what you were really up to right um the london day game style and the ethos behind it is win-win very open very honest right don't tell lies in set we don't hide our intent we don't pretend we want this thing when we really want this thing it's very open so what that means is not only does it feel good for you in a game as a man going forward from week to week month to month that you're an honest person and you're living in accordance with your moral code which includes chasing skirt but what you're also doing is women know this. They're used to guys creeping on them, guys trying all kinds of like roundabout ways to try to get into the knickers. And you're not one of those guys. You're not only coming straight out with your intent very honestly, but you're doing it in an artfully delivered way, which shows a knowledge of the language of seduction. So what you'll usually find is girls respect it, even if they don't fancy you. So you'll you'll often get girls who will say to you afterwards, like, you know, let's say they're married, the answer is no. They say, you should keep doing this. It's really good what you're doing, right? Because they know, as girls, that they're not the initiators. They need men to initiate. And here you are going out artfully, honestly, masculine man initiating. They know it's this, these things which create the opportunities that the girls get to choose from. So, so they, they get the game. So they politely receive the advance. Everything's open and above board. You're not worried that people are going to bust you, that, you know, the cops are going to come down because you've been creeping on women. It's a very, very open, honest thing to get the intent out. You just have to do it artfully. So, right. So I've kind of rattled through the model pretty fast there. Um, I just want to give you an overview of how technical this can be. Like I say, I don't want to overstate. Technique doesn't win everything, right? All these things you've heard already in the show about straightening out your inner game, about building your masculinity, about getting your life in order, about having a good mental map of how the world works at the sexual marketplace. All of that still holds, right? None of this is gainsaying it. Right? This is merely a technical structure which can be practiced just the way that you can practice boxing, swimming, archery, chess. It's a technical structure. But just like in boxing, it doesn't matter how good your style is, if you've got no muscle and you're faint of heart, you ain't going to knock out the top guys, right? You've got to work on all your attributes as well. But this is a very efficient, repeatable, very, very well-tested value delivery mechanism by which you can walk around, see a girl you like the look of, go up, present the best of yourself to her, and create a reasonable chance that it's going to go where you want to go, which for me is fuck them, right? So that is London Day Game model. I believe I've got about five minutes left, so I'll take questions. Any questions? Hey, Nick, thanks. Yeah, I've always been a big fan of yours oh, um, for about a year, two years now. Um, so, I've got a question is you know, in the beginning, you said that uh, day game's not for everyone. Right. Yeah. And uh, it depends on your personality, your, your personal calibration, a lot of factors. Um, what, do you th what do you think about the need, you know, the fact that most people sort of need to get their inner game um, solid first before they even attempt something as difficult as day game? Do you think that automatically weeds out a lot of uh, people who, are, who may not be suitable for something like day game? Okay, well, that's uh, my answer there is yes and no, so I'll have to explain. Um, the answer is no in the sense that you don't become a procrastinator, right? Uh, the only way to learn to swim is to get wet. You have to go out and take action. And if you spend all your time navel gazing, right, in a game work, you're never really going to get started. It's going to make you anxious and nothing happens, right? If you go out and try things, and keep doing them, your inner game often has a way of working itself out. 
So, you know, men should be men of action. So in that sense, I'd say, look, just get on with it. Go out, like walk, walk through the fire and get it done. And you're going to feel very good about yourself. Just in the way that if you feel like shit and you're a bit sore, but you make yourself go to the gym anyway and push against the resistance, you're going to be glad you did. But the caveat to that is um, if you have serious issues, like serious ang social anxiety issues or self-loathing issues or, you know, more than just the normal, you know, I'm a bit scared to talk to women in the day when I'm sober, then yeah, you've got to deal with those, right? Because there's no hiding on the street. There's no loud music. It's not dark. You're looking right into the girl's eyes. She sees you as you really are and you see her as she really is. And if your inner game is wrecked, she's going to see it in your eyes. Right? You're going to have like hunted eyes, you're going to have sad eyes. She's going to give you these little tests, which if you're feeling solid, you just blow them off and you laugh and you tease. But if your inner game's not right, they'll wobble you. And also there's a tremendous amount of rejection in day game. So again, if you're a bit fragile, maybe you don't want to be going through that rejection too fa um, straight away. So it all depends what level of inner game work you need. If you need big inner game work, yeah, I'd say go do that for a while, you know, get your house in order. Because... Day game is not a magic bullet, right? Like, um, it doesn't break the rules of the sexual marketplace, right? High value women sleep with high value men. They do not sleep with low value men. So if you're a low value man, and you know, this, is, this changes, right? You work on your value, right? I mean, when I started this, I was considerably lower value than I am now, right? But you've got to have an idea. Some girls will be out your league. And if you're really struggling internally, most girls are about your league because you know, your life's not a very happy place at that moment. So the girl doesn't want to be part of it and you're just going to get a ton of rejection. So yeah, like deal with that. But if you think you've reached a certain threshold where you know, you're you kind of doing all right, you've got your issues, but you're kind of doing all right. Yeah, just go do it. Don't, pro don't procrastinate. I guess I want to say, how do you deal with like riding the tube early in the morning? If a girl's not looking at you, but sometimes like you look away and you see in the reflection, she's like checking me out like crazy. That's a big IOI, right? Um, but but I mean like like do they want us to catch them looking at them? But what, some girls don't want you to catch them. Well, I think the girls don't know what they want. They, I mean, they want to look. I mean, it's like if you're on a business meeting and the girl across you in the table's got a huge pair of tits, right? Okay, you want to look at them, but you don't want to get caught, right? It's social situation, so you've got to read that. But, I mean, a girl on a tube, that I call that an ambush situation because she's not just freely able to leave. On the street, you stop a girl, she's not interested, she just keeps walking, right? But a girl who's standing waiting for a friend or a girl who's sitting at a cafe with a full cup of coffee, a girl on the tube, right? She's kind of stuck there. So you've got to use your social acuity to treat that a bit different. And normally what I'd say in that is you don't go as full on, right? You know, you don't, you know, eyeball her, come in with full conviction and be very, very sensitive to IODs, indicators of disinterest. So let's say she's got her phone, she's looking, you chat to her, start talking to her, you know, just across the ca carriage. You might say, excuse me, um, I like X, Y, Z, it's very nice, right? she's gonna give you a reaction. And now if her reaction is an IOD, she's like, oh, thanks, and looks back at her phone. You're like, okay, look, she's giving me the brush off. It's an awkward situation. But if she lights up and keeps the eye contact, you think, you know what? Let's keep going on this, right? And you'll become a little bit more bold. And then it might get to the point where you're saying, look, I gotta get off at next stop. I don't suppose you can come on the platform for a sec so we can keep chatting or whatever. But it's working on the IOIs and the IODs. Great, that's up. about all the time we have. Give it up for Nick Krauser. Thank you.